Allow me to raise an often underappreciated factor in the debate about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The world is facing a cooling crisis. Temperatures around the world continue to rise. Collectively, the past eight years have been the hottest since record keeping began. As a result, demand for air conditioning is soaring, including in places that traditionally didn't need it before. Last summer, much of Western Europe experienced extreme heat with temperatures topping 40 degrees Celsius in England alone. But less than 5% of homes there have air conditioning. At the same time, much of the world's economic growth is being driven by countries with hotter climates, growing populations, and fast rising incomes. This past March was the hottest on record in India. The heat was so extreme that overheated birds fell out of the sky. In a growing number of places in the world, air conditioning is not a luxury. It's a matter of public health. Today, it is estimated more than one billion people face health and safety risks due to lack of access to cooling. While the needs are clear, the accelerated demand for cooling equipment has large environmental costs. Buildings overall contribute approximately 40% of global energy-related greenhouse gas emissions. Within a building, heating and cooling accounts for roughly 40% of its energy consumption. That represents approximately 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions today. The growing demand for air conditioning in homes and workspaces around the world will be one of the biggest drivers of global electricity demand over the next three decades, according to the International Energy Agency. Global energy demand from air conditioners will triple by 2050, consuming as much electricity as all of China and India combined. It's a vicious cycle. The hotter the earth gets, the more demand for air conditioning grows. More air conditioning creates greenhouse gas emissions, leading to further climate change. Our challenge, reduce greenhouse gas emissions from HVAC systems, while making cooling more accessible to all those who need it. But we can't do it alone. Change of this magnitude requires new approaches, new collaborations. It requires step changes in decarbonization technology, in addition to expanded public-private partnerships and regulatory action. To accelerate sustainable innovation, we recently established Carrier Ventures, a venture capital fund that is investing in a portfolio of companies selected for their next generation technology. We are looking to these partners to disrupt ourselves and the industry as they develop and commercialize net zero solutions. There are companies like Transera, which is developing a new class of affordable, energy-efficient cooling systems. Current air conditioners consume more energy in humid conditions. Transera is developing a novel, sponge-like material that grabs moisture from the atmosphere to enable its air conditioner to cool air more efficiently. Carrier Ventures is also driving decarbonization in the cold chain. One of our portfolio companies, named Advolt, developed the world's first plug-in electric systems for refrigerated transportation markets and we are working together to advance battery electric transport refrigeration systems. I'm proud to be leading Carrier Ventures, which is one step towards accelerating solutions to our climate crisis. For us at Carrier, our goal is to reduce the carbon emissions of our customers by one gigaton by 2030. And we are making good progress against this goal. Since 2020 alone, the adoption of our high efficiency and lower GWP refrigerant products and avoided food waste has helped our customers avoid approximately 137 million metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions. I know we can all agree that there's a lot of good momentum taking place throughout our industries, but there's more work to be done. And it's going to take all of us to make our vision of a decarbonized future a reality. Thank you.